Reading of Ezekiel's Prophecy The word of the Lord came to me, Son of man, prophesy against the shepherds of Israel. Prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord God to the shepherds, Woe to the shepherds of Israel who feed themselves. Should not the shepherds feed the sheep? You feed yourselves with their milk and clothe yourselves with their wool, and slaughter the fat ones, but you do not feed the sheep. You have not strengthened the weak sheep, nor healed the sick sheep, nor bandaged the injured sheep. You have not brought back the strayed sheep, nor sought out the lost sheep. Instead, you have ruled over them harshly and brutally. The sheep have scattered for lack of a shepherd. They have become prey to all the wild animals. My sheep have wandered aimlessly over all the mountains and high hills. My sheep have been scattered throughout the land, and no one has asked for them or searched for them. Therefore, O Lord, you shepherds, hear the word of the Lord, as surely as I live, declares the Lord God, because my flock has been plundered and has become a prey to all the wild animals, because there is no shepherd, and because my shepherds have not searched for my flock but have fed themselves and not the sheep, therefore, you shepherds, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God, Here I am to confront the shepherds and reclaim my flock from them. I will take away their shepherding, and they will no longer be able to feed themselves. I will rescue my flock from their mouths, so that they will no longer be their food. Thus says the Lord God, See, I myself will look for my sheep and take care of them. Word of the Lord. Thank God. Proclamation of the Gospel of Jesus Christ according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. At that time, Jesus told his disciples this parable, The kingdom of heaven is like the story of the master who went out early in the morning to hire workers for his vineyard. He agreed with the workers for a silver coin a day and sent them into his vineyard. At nine o'clock in the morning, the landowner went out again and saw others standing in the marketplace idle. He said to them, You also go into my vineyard, and I will pay you whatever is right. So they went. The landowner went out again at noon and at three in the afternoon and did the same thing. He went out again about five o'clock in the evening and found others standing in the marketplace. He said to them, why have you been standing here all day idle? They answered, Because no one has hired us. The owner said to them, You also go into my vineyard. When evening came, the owner said to the manager, Call the workers and pay them their wages, starting with the last ones and working their way up to the first. Those who had been hired at five o'clock came and each received a silver coin. Then those who had been hired first came, expecting to be paid more. But each of them also received a silver coin. When they received their pay, they began to grumble against their owner. These last ones worked only one hour, and you have made them equal to us who have borne the burden and heat all day long. Then the owner said to one of them, Friend, I have not wronged you. Didn't we agree on a silver coin? Take what is yours and go home. I want to give to this last hired person the same as I gave to you. Don't I have the right to do what I want with what belongs to me? Or are you jealous because I am being good? So the last will be first, and the first will be last. Word of Salvation. Glory to you, O Lord. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, Imagine an early morning, when the sun is still rising on the horizon. You are walking down the street, and in the distance, you see a man standing alone, waiting. You approach and realize that he is waiting for someone, or perhaps something. A little further on, you see another man, and another, and another, all standing waiting. Then you understand, these men are looking for work, waiting to be hired to earn their living for the day. This scene reminds us of the parable that Jesus tells in today's Gospel, the parable of the workers in the vineyard. Here we see a generous employer, who repeatedly goes out throughout the day to hire new workers, promising them a fair wage. And at the end of the day, when it is time to pay, those who worked only one hour receive the same as those who endured the heat all day. This parable challenges us to rethink our traditional concepts of justice and merit. After all, isn't this what we normally expect? That those who work harder should receive more? that rewards should be proportionate to effort? But Jesus shows us that God's justice works differently. 
His generosity and grace cannot be limited by our human notions of merit. He calls everyone, no matter how late they have responded to the call, and treats them with the same compassionate kindness. And this is where Ezekiel's message comes in powerfully. The prophet describes God as the ultimate shepherd, the one who cares for his flock with love and vigilance. But Ezekiel has a scathing critique for Israel's shepherds, those religious and political leaders who should care for the people but instead exploit and abandon them. Woe to the shepherds of Israel who feed themselves. God exclaims, These false shepherds, instead of feeding and protecting the flock, are only concerned with satisfying their own needs and ambitions. They despise the weak, do not care for the sick, do not seek out the lost. Their only interest is to make the most of it for themselves. How often, my brothers and sisters, do we also fall into this temptation of focusing on our own interests, to the detriment of the well-being of those we should be caring for? Perhaps we are parents who neglect to devote time to our children, absorbed in our careers or hobbies, or leaders in the church who become more concerned with maintaining the status quo than reaching out to the marginalized, or even citizens who turn a blind eye to the injustices and needs of our community. But God does not stand by in the face of such neglect. He firmly declares, I myself will search for my sheep and take care of them. It is no longer up to failed leaders, but God himself who takes on the responsibility of seeking out, gathering, and caring for his flock. This reminds us that ultimately, it is not we who bear the burden of care. We are merely instruments in the hands of the Good Shepherd, the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the one who truly cares for his people, guiding us, nurturing us, protecting us, even when we, as human leaders, fail in our mission. And just like the employer in Jesus' parable, God extends his grace and calling to all, regardless of how productive or worthy we are in the eyes of the world. He does not look at our resume or accomplishments, but at our hearts. His love and generosity know no bounds. Imagine, for example, a person who found Christ late in life. Perhaps he spent decades drifting away from God, involved in sin and addiction. But one day, he hears the call of the Good Shepherd and responds, giving his life to Jesus. Even though he has worked for a much shorter period of time than those who have grown in faith, he receives the same eternal inheritance, the same full life in the kingdom of God. Or think of someone who has always been in church, diligently fulfilling his religious duties, but whose heart has not yet been truly transformed by the love of Christ. Perhaps this person resents seeing someone who seems less deserving receive the same love and blessings from God. My beloved, this is the true nature of the kingdom of God, an economy of grace, where the last will be first and the first will be last. It is not a reward system based on our performance, but a generous bestowal of God's love and mercy. And this challenges us to re-examine our own attitudes and assumptions. Do we look down on those who seem less deserving than we are? Do we complain when God pours out his abundant grace on repentant sinners, just as he did on us? Today's call is to be like the Good Shepherd, reflecting God's compassion and generosity in our lives. No matter how late someone responds to Christ's call, no matter how imperfect or flawed they are, everyone deserves our love, patience, and care. Just as God repeatedly goes out throughout the day to seek out laborers, he continues to go out in search of lost sheep. He never gives up on us, even when we ourselves give up. And he expects us, as his people, to follow his example, extending his grace and love to all who cross our path. Brothers and sisters, may we be faithful shepherds, reflecting the mercy and generosity of the Good Shepherd. May our lives be a living testimony to the truth that in the kingdom of God, there are no favorites, no first or last, only beloved children, equal before the infinite love of our Heavenly Father. May God's grace, peace, and love be with you always. Amen. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl throughout the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen.